I'm Justin Hall. I'm the winemaker at Inconeep Cellars. I make all the white wines here. Uh, we're in Osuyas, British Columbia, which is in the southern Okanagan Valley. The most unique thing about the Okanagan is that it spans north to south. And in that little bit of an area, you can get such a diverse range of temperatures. So here in Osuyas, we grow Cabernet and Syrah. There's a few white wine varieties as well, but the big reds is where we really shine down in the south Okanagan. Uh, big, rich, ripe red wines. Now you move up into, say, Oliver, and you can start getting a little bit more mixture of diverse varieties. And then as you get into Okay Falls, it's a little bit cooler by about three, four degrees. Chardonnays, Pinot Noirs, beautiful wine. Same thing, Naramata Bench, you go up a little bit further in Penticton, and they've got the lake to moderate. Some of the best Chardonnay and Pinot Noirs in the valley are growing up there. Hands down, awesome, awesome wine quality. But here at Inkweep Cellars, we make a wide variety of Cabernet Sauvignons, Merlots, Syrahs, and then from Oliver, some Chardonnay, some Riesling. Just 100 meters to the south of this vineyard here, where we have this kind of clay sand, we have these darker soils and we grow our Syrah in that. And what happens is you've got a really hot site, but then you've got darker soils and it really gets this distinct earthy character coming out of the Syrah. Um, up top behind us to the, uh, I guess it would be the west, again, another 100 meters in another direction. Um, very, very sandy and we're growing Syrah up there as well, but it's almost more of a Shiraz style. You get super hot and it's on a little bit of a slope to the sun. Very black, black pepper, uh, dark, dark berries. So in the end, often we end up blending the two together to make our best Syrah. 2020 is a very interesting vintage, just like the whole year in general. Um, started off pretty cool and wet, and what that did was right during berry set, um, we're getting about 30% less crop, and we think that's due to uh, the rain at berry set. Their clusters are a little smaller, they're a little more patchy and sparse, so you're getting berries getting a lot more sunlight. Talking with the viticulture teams, we think this is going to create more tannins in the wine because you got a lot more sun hitting around the whole berry, not being blocked out by several berries. Obviously, quality is going to be a little bit up, I think, overall because of concentration. Now, take the same amount of grapes and lose 30%. You're getting less yields. They create bigger, stronger red wines. So I think the quality is going to be really, really good. Some of the later varieties, we're going to have to be careful. And again, very important to be growing those varieties in the correct sites. Red varieties, I think Pinot Noir is going to show pretty good. It wasn't overly hot this summer, but we still get it, did get enough heat. I think Syrah could really have a, a big surprise. They're probably going to be on the slightly less overripe and more on the peppery Northern Rhone style. I think what I'm really excited about this year is the white varieties. Um, being the white winemaker, I get to do all the whites, of course, and already we have a Sauvignon Blanc that's come through. The whole building smells of Sauvignon Blanc. So it's really exciting. Some of the interesting different things that we do in the cellar is that every year we try a new trial. So we always feel like if you're just standing still and doing the same thing you've always done, the rest of the industry is sort of moving ahead and, and new technologies, new processes are coming through and it's really important to try to stay on top of that game as well. Now, of course, we're not just buying and adding every product off the shelf, but it's about trying it here, trying it there. Um, you know, looking into things that reduce oxygen intake into the wine, in, in white wines in particular, as that's my um, expertise, I guess you would say, is keeping my white juice away from oxygen. So we started adding some CO2 pellets. We're trying to create a space of oxygen-free environment and high CO2. And then when you press that out, it goes into a tank full of CO2 and you start your fermentation. And all that stuff adds up to higher aromatics in the end. What do I love about winemaking? It's different every year, and you're constantly looking at the grapes. You're out in the land, you've got to deal with the vintage, and you're trying to figure out what is going to happen that year. And of course, it's all just a prediction early on. But when it all comes together in the end, and you make a fabulous wine, and you see people smile when they drink your product, and they're with friends and family, and you're in these, you know, tight little communities where you're drinking it together and discussing hopefully your own bubbles of course you just bring happiness to people and I think that's one of the favorite things that I like about winemaking.